Greetings. Welcome to my video. My name is Antar. And one of the giants of modern jazz, which emanated from the United States in the 1940s during World War II, one of the absolute giants and the architects of the modern jazz, which was called bebop, was Dizzy Gillespie. And you might have seen photos of Dizzy Gillespie playing a trumpet and he had a bent horn and the bell of the horn goes up like that and big, when he got older, he got these big cheeks looking like a frog or something. Dizzy was a great musical genius, you know. And, um, I met him once in the second half of the 80s. So I was attending UCLA, University of California, Los Angeles, and I was working on my PhD in music with a concentration in ethnomusicology. And my mentor, my professor, was Nasir Jirazboy who was a very well-known ethnomusicologist in those days. He was Indian. And he also played the sitar. And I was playing sitar then. And so, you know, I was an Indian music expert. And he'd written a great book on Indian music called The Rags of North Indian. Or something in evolution. His theory was that the Indian ragas had evolved over time and changed. And he even had recordings from as recent as the 1930s of versions of ragas we hear today that maybe had one note different. So it's a fascinating book. I think it's my favorite book on ragas. And, uh, it wasn't well received for two reasons. In in the Western world, no one knew what the hell he was talking about. You have to be conversant in the language of ragas. And in India, they didn't like the book because Indian society is very traditionally minded. And they would rather believe that these ragas were handed down from Lord Shiva in their modern form. And it's just not true. So I was studying there and uh, the great bebop master, bebop father, Dizzy Gillespie, and he used to play with Charlie Parker. Charlie Parker was another great architect of bebop and of course Thelonious Monk. He came to UCLA and he was artists in residence for a week. So he was every day, you know, giving a, a lecture seminar and I attended every day. Very interesting. And he never once didn't see hiding her hair or a trumpet. Didn't see a trumpet. He did all his demonstrating on the piano. And it was him in that week that made me realize that there are no half diminished chords. There are no minor seven flat five chords, which is, which are very prevalent in jazz standards and stuff. You know. But in the forties, they were conceived of as a minor sixth chord, a minor third higher. Anyway, I digress. So Dizzy Gillespie was artist in residence. So one day I was with my professor and uh, we ran into Dizzy Gillespie in the hallway. And uh, Nazir, my professor, he introduced me to Dizzy Gillespie. And I was like, you know, and I must have looked pretty funny to Dizzy Gillespie because I was a white guy and 
I was really into the university trip, you know, and I had on a herringbone sports jacket. And I wasn't wearing a tie, but I was wearing a nice shirt, you know, and my hair was relatively short and I was pretty serious, you know, and Nazir told him, this is Antar and he's a very good sitar player and uh, he's teaching some of our classes and everything, you know, and I, I'm thinking, this is the man that composed Night in Tunisia and all those great songs, you know, and I was looking at him and I've never seen a cat so strange in my life before. Maybe that's why they called him Dizzy. I don't know, but he did this thing. We were gonna. I thought I was gonna shake his hand. You know, he did this thing where he went up to me and he was like, like I was Dizzy Gillespie, and he was a starstruck. Dizzy Gillespie fan and he was like you know it was really strange it was really strange so that was my I don't know if I ever said anything to him except how do you do you know something like that and he just was gaping at me maybe he was making a joke or some kind of revenge about you know in the in the late 40s and early 50s when he was bringing this new music to the people uh, people were accustomed to swing music which was the dance music before and they would he said they would sit and they would gape and not he said they didn't understand a fractured 11th from <laughs> a crippled 13th chord they didn't care you know so I don't know I, I can project all sorts of wonder what he was thinking and doing you know but that was strange it's the strangest dude I've ever seen and during the week you know I had been attending the lectures and uh, there were these guys over on the right side and in, in the front row and they would come every day and they were african-american gentlemen and they were very studious you know and they were working dashikis, you know. Dashikis were like this uh, traditional African garb that was popular. They were popular in the 1970s with black people. And after a few days, they asked Dizzy a question, you know. And the guy says, please tell us of the journey of John Coltrane. You know? And Dizzy was just, well, he used to play alto in my big band, you know that was it you know they, said, they might have been you know there's a John Coltrane church they might have been members of the John Coltrane church and at the end of his career John Coltrane became very religious and spiritual and everything and maybe that's what what they were up to I don't know you know I thought that was really funny you know to Dizzy John Coltrane was just some alto player that was in his band once you know and um, he also said in those lectures one day that he was given 13 honorary PhDs from universities all around the world. Which must be really something, you know, because they give this man honorary PhDs. He pretty much invented modern jazz. <laughs> he had some help, but he pretty much invented modern jazz. I think in the early and mid 1940s, he wouldn't have been allowed to even walk into the one of those universities because of the, the racism at the time. And then later in his life, he gets honorary PhDs from these people. So he says, I got 13 honorary PhDs. I call them my ornery PhDs. <laughs> Very funny, ornery PhDs. Unbelievable. He was a great man. Uh, my meeting with him was strange. But maybe that was pure dizzy. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Ciao.